Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we will be talking about um, the excitation contraction coupling. We will be talking about um, how mice and heads perform the power strokes and how the sliding fil um, filament model works and how that all get to happen. And we'll be, we'll be talking about also like um, muscle tension um and the factors affecting it the different types of muscle um fibers uh certain muscle type so we've got fast twitch and slow twitch right and we'll also be talking about um length tension relationship so let's first start off with what we call the um what happens at the t-tubules right so in the previous video we did cover the fact that T tubules are extensions or invaginations of the um, surface membrane of the muscle fiber called the sarcolemma. So this is the sarcolemma, right? And this is T tubule right here. So these are extensions that go deep into the muscle fiber. So the sarcolemma is superficial. And the T tubules go deep into, and their main function is to conduct a action potential which travels down and reaches the uh, myofibrils inside better. All right, so at the um, T tubule membrane, you've got this protein right here called the DHPR voltage gated protein channel. Right. And over here, you've got this, what we call this, this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, basically. And you've got this. Right here, this is the RYR, or the, um, that's in the, the name for it, but the actual, this is an abbreviation, the actual name is Riadenine Receptor. So it's Ryanodine receptor. What we've also got on the membrane, we've got another protein pump here. We call this the circa. All right. Again, it's an abbreviation. It stands for sarco endoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoendoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. All right, and I'll go through the function of each one of them in a moment. All right, so what happens is as the action potential reaches, so you know, we've got the um, the motor neuron here, the presynaptic motor neuron here that sends out um, ACH molecules, right, and then. A bunch of things happened, which I covered in the previous video. I won't be going again. That generates a new action potential in the muscle fiber. And the action potential travels along the sarcolemma and down the tube tubules to reach the, um, basically, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this entire bit right here is what we call the terminal cisterni. So this entire thing is what we call the terminal cisterny of of the sarcoplasmic reticulum all right and what happens is that imagine you've got this right the t tube here you've got one of the uh, terminal cisterny here and another terminal cisterny facing the other way like this these three together would make a triad, what we call a triad, right? But, and again, I've covered that in the previous video, so please go check it out. Now, what happens is that as the action potential travels down the T2 wheels, it will activate the voltage-gated DHPR protein channels, right? <clears throat> and it will allow calcium ions to flow through. So as calcium ions flow through, the RYR, the right receptor, detects 
the uh, the calcium uh, the presence of calcium ions right and the, the receptor will open up and letting out even more calcium ions from the terminal cystine of the sarcoplasmic reticulum right so as we know sarcoplasmic reticulum's main function is to store calcium ion right and as the ranadine receptor detects the presence of calcium ions outside in the sarcoplasm it will open up and allow calcium ions from inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum to flow out through it and into the space around and what happens it is it will travel down to the myofibrils you know where we have of course the sarcomere the functional unit of contraction this is what it looks like all right so this is basically a sarcomere this entire thing is called the myofibril this one of this guy is called the sarcomere right and again i've covered this in the previous video but essentially the calcium ions will bind onto a, a protein called the troponin on the actin and allowing the myosin to the myosin heads to be able to bind to the actin and perform power strokes and you know contract or flex or contract sliding model filament what happens like where the the myosin in the middle and the two actins come together towards the m line or the two z lines come together closer right, that's the side sliding model filament and so calcium ions allow that to happen all right so after stimulation has and all the stimuli has stopped or your, your muscle could be experiencing fatigue then this is when the circuit comes into place so the circuit which is basically an active pump will pump calcium ions back inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum for recycling purposes because you don't want to waste all those ions then we can reuse them when your muscles need to contract again and we use atp in this process to pump calcium ions back in all right and this is essentially the cycle of excitation um, contraction coupling reaction right so what really happens in, in this cycle because so now i'll be going over the the how the all those contraction really happens so what happens is that you've got this guy here this is the actin you've got let's say these two binding sites up here and you've got a myosin head right so go on uh, just like that so what happens is ATP attaches, is attached to, to the mycin head and the mycin head will bind to the actin like this. All right, ATP just like that. And it will perform a power stroke. So we'll pull it backwards. So now the myosin is positioned like this. Oops, give me a second. Yep, so but what happens next is uh, you've got this gap over here. And now your, your actin has moved forward slightly. And now ATP will basically hydrolyze to form ADP, PI, inorganic phosphate, allowing the myosin head to detach from the first binding site. Right, next is the myosin head will cock backwards, will reach out, and basically bind like this. Right, ADP, sorry, I'll just redraw this diagram of here. Right, so sorry, I'll just go through from the start again. 
that ATP. So basically, um, for the first step, right, you've got your mycin head attaching to the first bind mycin binding site on the actin. Second step is that the inorganic phosphate will leave the um, mycin head by changing its conformation and allowing it to flex and pull backwards. The third step is that ATP will hydrolyze and become ADP and inorganic phosphate, allowing the myosin head to detach from the binding site. The fourth step is that the head will cock backwards and again bind to the, the next binding site along, right? So here you've got it's binded to this one. Now here it's binded to the second one, right? So it shows the actin has moved forward while the myosin head stays still and it only cocks backwards or changed its angle basically and again we are now back to the first cycle so this is basically a muscle contraction cycle All right and so that is basically it and we'll move on to muscle fiber types right so you've got fast twitch and slow twitch so this is all you need to know for fast versus slow is that I'll, I'll construct a table which will make it easier for you guys. All right, so the first heading is the diameter of the fiber. And of course, fast fiber, larger, these guys are smaller. Uh, and then you've got capillary supply or if it's vascular or not, it's fast is less vascular, but these guys are higher, or higher slash more vascular. All right, um, mitochondria supply. Fast has less, slow has more. Fatigue, resistance. This guy is little this gets a lot time to peak tension time to peak tension fast slow that's why these are called fast twitch and slow twitch and color these guys are white and these guys are red basically so these are the main comparisons between the two types of fibers and so slow twitch fibers are designed to last for a long time when you've reached tetanus tetanus when your muscles are in contraction for a prolonged period of time and you're not just suddenly twitching your body and you're holding it still and fast is for when you need that quick twitch or quick tension from the muscles like for example if you're accelerating if you're sprinting you need a quick boost when running right so that's basically different types of fibers and the colors as well. You have to know the colors on, on the slides when presented to you during class. Now we'll talk about length tension relationship, right? So we all know that muscles contract, but uh, they also have an optimal length, right? What I mean by that is that these guys, right, for example, if I show you two, three diagrams actually, Boom, boom. Third diagram is this. All right, so the difference is that here, the two actin, uh, the two Z lines are really far, far away. Here, they're moderately far away, and here, they're really close together. All right, so what happens is that this is assumed to be optimal. This guy, there's really no overlapping between myosin and actin. So there's really no force that this muscle can do. So these are overextended. Right? Or if, if force, if they were to contract, it's the force would be really weak. This guy will be relatively strong. It will be the actually the strongest, basically, because it's had just that perfect amount of contact with the, enough mice and heads to bind to and contract, but also leave enough space for the Z lines to come together. Right. Here, uh, the thin filaments are too close together 
so for, they can't imagine if you're crossing your hand up like this if they're really far apart then they're not even touching each other or touching a little bit then they'll go very weak if they're middle like this in the middle then the force of contractions are very strong and if they're really close like this then they can't really contract anymore and the force or the tension um produced will be weak that's why we have this optimal length there when the tension or the force pro uh, produced will be at its peak and this works for every single muscle as well so depending on what muscles they are they will have a different length tension relationship we also need to know about muscle tension as well and i'll draw this graph over here so what happens here imagine this All right, and I'll draw this. So what happens is that this is the action potential, this y-axis. And this way axis it axis is contractile activity slash force. So basically when an action potential is sensed, right? As you can see, I know my drawing may not be the best, but its intensity, its amplitude is the same, same amplitude, but different frequency. But here you've got increasing frequency as you go along. Right, so the, so what happens is if you've got a single action potential, your muscles will twitch like that. Right, hence it's like this. No, but if you increase the frequency of the action potential, they they may add up. Right, so this is twitch summation. What happens is that you're adding up your twitch together to form a more um a stronger tension of force, right? But if you have very frequent action potentials these twitch will add up really large until you've reached maximum contractile force. And this is called tetanus, T-E-T-A-N-U-S, tetanus. This is when your muscles are, basically you go from, you slowly, you contract them up and you keep them contracted, All right? And this is what tetanus is, when your, your brain keeps sending signals to your muscles saying that you have to keep contracting it. So action potential frequency is really high now. And this is basically um, muscle tension. And muscle tension is also based on, first of all, the number of neurons activated, right? So, and therefore the number of fibers are recruited, right? So, you know, a motor unit is composed of a motor neuron and all the different muscle fibers that it controls or it innovates, right? So ultimately muscle tension depends on the number of muscle fibers recruited or activated by the neurons. And also depends on the stimulation frequency here or the action potential frequency. So those are the two main things that affects muscle tension, uh, yep. And oh yeah, also tetanus is um, defined as maximal prolonged contraction of muscles due to repeated stimuli. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.